Achindoon Castle is situated in the county of Murray in the northeast of Scotland, just a couple of miles from the village of Dufton, the self-proclaimed whisky capital of the world. From the tarmac road it's a half kilometre drive to the small car park and then another half kilometre on foot. In 2023, full access into the castle was restricted due to structural fears. The building is fenced off for now and possibly will be for some time. I'll leave a link in the description to the website where you can check on updates for when full access may be restored. The castle was built around 1470, that's five and a half centuries ago, and like many Scottish castles it has a colourful and troubled history. Feuding Scottish clans and squabbling nobles led to it being burned possibly twice during its 250 years of occupation. Another common feature of Scottish castles is of course an interesting location. More often than not, they are built on hills and outcrops, cliffs and islands, inaccessible and sometimes precarious locations. Achindoon, which one source translates as the Field of the Mound, sits atop an outcropping of limestone, which is a sedimentary rock that was likely laid down on the floor of a shallow sea south of the equator between a half and one billion years ago. Plate tectonics, crust uplift, continental breakup, surface erosion and then a dozen ice ages shaped the mound we see today. Human history in the area long predates today's castle, which stands on the site of either a previous castle or a Pictish fort that dates from a thousand years earlier, which in turn may have been built over an Iron Age hill fort from more than another thousand years previous. The neighbouring hills Little Convo there and Craig Dorney to the east have the remains of Iron Age hill forts on their summits that date back at least two and a half thousand years. Most of the extensive earthworks and trenches around the castle are believed to date from the earlier forts. It will take future archaeological works to answer the many questions there still are about the site. The castle was reported as abandoned around 1725, when anything of use would have been taken and over the years even a lot of the stonework was removed, for use in local buildings as well as the nearby Balvenie Castle in Dufton. Three centuries of pilfering and neglect has taken its toll on the structure and it is a testament to its builder that so much is still standing. The known history of Achindoon Castle is not complete, and there are quite a few conflicting reports of dates and events, so I apologise if I relate any wrong details. There does not appear to be any contemporary drawings or paintings showing what the castle originally looked like, but I've got some graphics that can give us an idea. The castle was probably commissioned by King James III of Scotland, and it became the residence of his younger brother John Stuart, the Earl of Mar and Gearloch. 
built around 1470, most likely by a favoured master mason to the royals, Thomas Cochrane. Only a few years into his tenure, however, the younger brother John was imprisoned for treason by means of witchcraft and died shortly afterwards in mysterious circumstances. The king gave his brother's title and the castle to its builder, Thomas Cochrane. Just three years later, in 1482, England invaded Scotland again. And near Edinburgh, Cochrane with some others was hanged from Lauder Bridge for plotting against the king. The king himself died six years later in 1488 at the Battle of Sochiburn, and the son that succeeded him died at the age of 40 at the Battle of Flodden. It was dangerous times to be a noble. The main hall you can see there with the large fireplace was grandly decorated and had an unusual vaulted ceiling that was ambitious for its day. It is unclear who inhabited the castle after Cochrane until the early 1500s when the Ogilvy family were in possession. They sold it in 1535 to the Gordon family, who were the clan that would give Achindoun its notorious status in history. The head of Clan Gordon was the Earl of Huntley, resident of Huntley Castle, 12 miles to the east of here. In 1562, the fourth Earl of Huntley and two of his sons, John and Adam Gordon, were taken prisoner at the Battle of Carrichy. The Earl died from ill health and the elder son John was executed, but Adam was released and later restored to royal favour and made Laird of Achindoun, most likely by his older brother George, who became the fifth Earl of Huntley when the family titles were restored in 1565. If you look there, you can see that all the larger stones are missing from the corners of the castle walls. The sagging perimeter wall there, I would say, had the buttresses added later. The tall buttress there at the base of the round tower is obviously a modern addition, possibly added during work that was done in the 1970s. The flooring was done during much more extensive maintenance works in the 1990s. The castle's new laird, Adam Gordon, would lead forces during the Scottish civil wars around Mary, Queen of Scots. Heightened by these wars, an old family feud between Clan Gordon and the neighbouring Clan Forbes led in 1571 to two battles between them in October and November that year, which saw the defeat of Clan Forbes. Gordon men were sent to demand the surrender of the seat of the Forbes clan, Corgarf Castle, 20 miles south of here but refusal resulted in the setting on fire of the castle, killing over two dozen people, including women and children. Some sources say that Achindoun was attacked not long afterwards and burned in revenge for such a notorious deed. Adam Gordon spent time in exile in France and on his return was imprisoned for two years and died a few years later. The castle passed to his younger brother, Patrick Gordon, and his older brother's son became the 6th Earl of Huntley. The structure there that you'll pass on your approach dates after the castle and is an old lime kiln. It may have fell into disuse when larger scale operations began at the lime quarries at Dufton in the late 1800s. The exploits of the 6th Earl of Huntley would outdo all his predecessors and he surely only survived as long as he did due to the favour of Scottish kings. 
In 1588 he was charged with treason for conspiring to assist the Spanish Armada's invasion of Britain. Not long after he began a rebellion in the north which resulted in imprisonment. He had to leave Scotland for a time after a failed plot to imprison the king. Charged with treason a second time after again conspiring with the Spanish. He was excommunicated twice and imprisoned four times during his life, dying soon after being released from Edinburgh Castle in 1636. It was earlier in his career, however, at the age of only 30, that he brought retribution down on Achindoon, when he got involved in a feud between the Grants and the Mackintoshes and their ally, the Earl of Murray. After personally stabbing and killing Murray and burning his house, Huntley's enemies took revenge on him, ravaging his lands and sacking Achindoon. The story goes that it was William Mackintosh that took vengeance in 1592 by attacking and burning Achindoon Castle, an act that it seems he did later pay for with his life at the hands of the Gordons. Patrick Gordon survived the sacking of his castle, but died two years later, fighting for Huntley at the Battle of Glenlivet. If you're 